I think it's really important that we always remember that New Mexico has this really long history of human creativity. And I think in no other art form um, is it as clear that there is basically 3,000 years of creativity that's unbroken, where individuals are taking materials, transforming them into something that can decorate their body. I love that trajectory because Everybody wears jewelry. Every culture has some sense of jewelry um, within their heritage. But in New Mexico, we seem to be this sort of conglomeration of every culture in the world you can possibly imagine. So every form of jewelry that, that has ever been created has been created in New Mexico at some time during the past or certainly now in the present. So innovation can happen within a narrow scope of a tradition, but also across traditions and cultures. How is that creativity important? Well, I think it's very important that we realize that human beings don't live in boxes. Human beings do not live um, with one straight trajectory moving from my ancestry into my descendants. Uh, we all share ideas. We share uh, community, we share neighborhoods, uh, we share materials. And most importantly, I think we share friendships. So you can see that today with contemporary jewelers living in New Mexico. They know each other. A Navajo jeweler might be a very close friend with a Hispanic jeweler. An African-American jeweler might be very close friends with a Japanese-American jeweler. And they share ideas and they share technology. Uh, they share tools. And that is the way that human beings exist. And that's what's so wonderful about New Mexico, that for thousands of years, New Mexico has not been a land remote beyond compare. It's been a crossroads. It's been a place that people have come to. It's been a place that people have passed through on their way somewhere else. And new ideas are constantly being transmitted and shared. New materials are being transmitted. Uh, technologies are being transmitted. And all of this can be reflected in the jewelry history of New Mexico. What lineages of creative inspiration have you found through this work? Well, certainly there are numerous Native American lineages, and uh, one of the things that I'm most looking forward to people seeing in this exhibition is some of the earliest work, almost 3,000 years old, there is jewelry that is made of material that does not come from New Mexico, that was brought into New Mexico. So clearly that maker uh, looked at a shell, a piece of shell that had wonderful iridescence, and must have said, this is incredible. I've never seen anything like this before. I'm going to celebrate it. And what we tend to think of with traditional cultures is the traditional cultures say, never seen that before, and reject it. Human beings don't do that. Human beings try things. The way that we eat foods, uh, the way that we celebrate music that's outside of our own is a perfect example of human sharing. And materials through jewelry and ornament, because things um, are often very small and can be portable, can come across from the Pacific or from the Gulf Coast into New Mexico and become part of the visual heritage of our state. Isn't there a piece in the show that you consider sort of the Rosetta Stone of New Mexico jewelry? There's a great object in, in the exhibition that has two tabs of turquoise which is something that we would certainly expect jewelers would use today from 400 BCE, so about 2,400 years old. And um, flanking those two pieces of turquoise are two pieces of abalone shell. So abalone had to have come from the Pacific. Mm -hmm. So at least 2,500 years ago, people were carrying this abalone shell as some precious object from the Pacific into New Mexico, perhaps traded from community to community. But at some point, somebody in New Mexico said, 
this is a cool thing and I want to celebrate it. I want to use that material in a way that's never been used before. And so it flanks those two pieces of turquoise, which we tend to think of as so prototypically New Mexican. And then it's strung on yucca fiber. So what could be more New Mexican? Uh, but it's all about importation and sharing of new materials. How do materials jewelers use share a story of New Mexico? Well, I think there are certain things that um, are absolutely the, the expected stereotypical material. Certainly turquoise is that material. Um, and what we tend to think of is turquoise comes from New Mexico. Well, it also comes from Arizona. It comes from Nevada. Uh, it comes from Utah. So turquoise comes from throughout the Southwest. Uh, but turquoise also came up from Mexico. Turquoise also went from the Cerrillos mines down to the Mexica people of Mexico City, uh, the founder of Mexico City, long before the arrival of Europeans, there were trade routes so that this Cerrillos turquoise could be used um, in pre-Columbian works of art. So that transmission of materials is something that is absolutely at the core of precious things. Uh, you share precious things. You use them as a commodity for trade. And uh, we see that with silver and gold um, into the current day. Um, and what could be more uh, the tourist item for somebody to bring home than Native American jewelry, uh, the stereotype of Native American jewelry? Well, 100 years ago, 120 years ago, what tourists wanted to bring home was Mexican-style gold and silver filigree jewelry. That was the tourist jewelry that was bought. Uh, that fell out of favor. Uh, the Hispanic style of filigree jewelry fell out of favor, and Native American jewelry took its place. Who knows, maybe in the future, Japanese American Turk, uh, jewelry <laughs> from New Mexico will be the thing that tourists are bringing home. Um, if we're doing our job right with this exhibition, we'll be introducing people to a lot of those new traditions. There's even some things, or at least one piece made out of plastic. There are a number of different or composites. Plastic. Okay. There, there are a number of different pieces made out of plastic uh, in the exhibition, and that's something that we tend to think of as new. Uh, but certainly in the Depression era, there were a number of jewelers, particularly at Kewa Pueblo or Santo Domingo Pueblo, where the jewelers couldn't afford coral or black jet or onyx more expensive materials, so they used the plastic from battery casings, or they used the plastic from old discarded records, long playing records, or they used toothbrushes, uh, the plastic <laughs> and toothbrushes, and ground that down and used it like a precious stone. That's really innovative. Um, well, it's, it's also human. It's problem solving. You find these discarded materials and you find a new purpose for them. Uh, you upcycle them and turn them into a piece of ornament. Uh, there are other works from plastic from from the 1940s uh, that were created by one of the leading plastics engineers in the United States. And Armin Winfield was brought to New Mexico to teach plastics technology at the University of New Mexico and be an advisor for Sandia National Labs. And here he was in the weekends and evenings working with his artist friends and casting plastic jewelry while he was making ballistics proof windscreens uh, for Sandia National Labs on the weekdays. Uh, so there's this <laughs> wonderful combination of creativity and functionality. How does a process help to give us an understanding of what New Mexicans work with? Many of the contemporary artists in the show are working with the most high-tech of materials that they can possibly uh, imagine. Uh, Pat Pruitt from Laguna Pueblo uses laser cutters, computer-controlled uh, routers and grinders. And so he's using very, very high-tech materials of the space age. And yet at exactly the same time, an artist like Osman Messina, who came from Mali in West Africa, needs basically something to burn in a fireplace, some mud and some dung and a chunk of silver, and he can make the most exquisite of braided and woven silver and gold jewelry in the tradition of centuries of his family. He comes from at least 10 generations of gold and silversmiths in West Africa. And he basically needs no equipment whatsoever in order to create this jewelry. He can make absolutely everything that he needs. And he's so, here in New Mexico. Now. And he's here in New Mexico, oh. exactly. Um, and so we see this range of technologies. Uh, some artists love that high tech. Other artists um, simply use their hands and the most minimal of equipment. What about art and jewelry is amplified by taking a look at New Mexico jewelry? 
Well, I think we can learn an awful lot about the nature of human creativity simply by exploring one medium or one type of thing that's being made throughout the trajectory of humanity. So when we look at 3,000 years of ornamentation in New Mexico, we get to see that artists don't have to step very far from the thing that went before them to open up an entirely new world of opportunities and options. Uh, they just have to add one material. For instance, the introduction of silver into Native American jewelry opened up a huge realm of in innovation and ideas where all of those traditional materials that native jewelers might have been using 100 years earlier, turquoise and stone and shell, when set in silver becomes an entirely different art form. The slightest introduction of a new thought, a new idea, can mean that the whole art form veers in an entirely different direction. And that's very exciting to me, to see the way that human beings can follow um, a slight hint and take it to an entirely new world. What do you hope people will take away from this exhibition? I hope that people will take away the understanding that looking around you and appreciating something um, that may seem just pass byable is something that we need to spend more time doing. Uh, we need to ask people questions because so many of these objects look like something that you'd say, okay, it's a piece of jewelry and you'd move on. But once you find out the story of the maker or the story of the culture that uh, that object was made for, it opens your appreciation for human creativity and allows us to realize that human beings are so much more interesting than we tend to expect. Um, and that if we allow people to exist outside of previously expected expectations, those individuals are going to exceed all of our expectations. The jewelers in New Mexico are some of the best in the United States. And the wonderful thing is they have been for at least 3,000 years.